Hi again, Mark here from Talking Bass. This week, I'm going to be giving you a little tip for incorporating some quick little ghost notes into your bass lines using only one finger. So we're looking at efficiency in our playing and economy of motion. Remember, all the lesson material, including the tab, is available to view over at Talking Bass, so just click on the link in the info below or the card. And while you're there, check out the lesson map where you'll find hundreds more lessons on every bass topic imaginable. And then sign up for the free Talking Bass membership to gain access to a ton of cool practice resources and downloads like the Scale Reference Manual ebook. So, go check it out. Okay, so you probably already know what ghost notes are. It's those dead notes that we get by just holding our hand against the string without fretting a note, and they sound like this. Okay, so we can use them to add momentum to a line, so a line that sounds maybe like this. With ghost notes in there, it might sound like this. Okay, so by adding those ghost notes in there, we get more of that momentum and propulsion. Now, I'm going to assume a basic knowledge of ghost notes for this lesson. If you don't know anything about the basics, just follow the links in the info below to some of my other lessons where you'll find out, you know, everything you need to know. But what you'll usually find is that you practice dead notes on the same string as the fretted note. Ghost notes usually lead into a note. So if I take a C, third fret of the A string, I could play two ghost notes leading into that. Okay, and I'm playing those ghost notes on the A string. Now that's fine, and a lot of the time that'll be the best way to play them, and a lot of this is based on context, but you can also play ghost notes on strings other than the fretting notes. So, again, that C there on the third fret of the A string, I could actually play the ghost notes on the D string. So instead of, I'm getting, okay? So that's a very popular way of playing ghost notes, you know, playing them, on a separate string. But today I'm going to show you a way of raking through ghost notes that allows for getting a lot more speed and variety in there. So let's have a look at that C again, third fret of the A string, and I'm going to start by getting into what I call home position. Now any of you that have seen many of my lessons will know what I'm talking about. I talk about this a lot. It's just a way of coming from a position of silence, and it's great for ghost notes. So. What we're going to do is take that first finger, the index finger, and we're just going to lay it lightly across the A, D, and G string. So just dead weight there, just holding against the string. I'm not fretting the notes, I'm just holding it across, so you'll just get some harmonics there. And then you're going to take the second, third, and fourth fingers, and then just lay those down as well, so they come down across all the strings, and the second and third fingers will probably protrude a little past the edge of the neck there. So when we do that, We've just got these dead notes there, okay? So that's the home position. So when we do that, if you're just starting out, you know, like if you've just gone on stage and you've turned your amp up and everything, you've got the volumes up, this position, if we start from here, is a position of silence. We aren't going to have any problems there. So the home position is great for ghost notes because we don't have to do anything. We're already in position to get them. So, you know, if we move into a fretted C there, I've got the the ghost note's there already, and then we just fret the note, okay? So, okay, so that's how I would normally teach playing ghost notes on there. Now, you can also use that home position for playing the ghost notes on the D string. So, again, we just play those two notes there on the D string, and then we can drop down to that C, third fret of the A string. Okay? So that's the standard way of playing ghost notes, you know, moving into that, uh, into that fretted note. But what we're going to do is actually try raking. So what we're going to do is start off in that home position, and then all I want you to do, using one finger, just the index finger of your picking hand, is we're going to play the ghost note, and then the C. Okay, so you can see I'm just raking across there. So, so you want to take this slowly, ghost note, you know, so the finger rakes across, butts up against that C, uh, against the A string, sorry, and then we fret the note. Take it really slow to begin with, all with one finger, okay, and then you can just speed up. Okay, so it's a great way of efficiently moving across with a ghost note and leading into that C. So there we were leading into a fretted note on the A string, but obviously we can also lead into notes on other strings. So let's try the G here at the third fret of the E string. So again, we can 
get into home position and then ghost note on the A string, rake into the G. Okay, so just try that round and round until you get used to the motion. And then we could try a bass line moving between the two. So we'll try C and then G. So that'll sound like this. So obviously this is really good for building up speed because we don't really have to use two fingers there, we're just using this raking motion. So if I was to build up speed, if I was to try that with two fingers on the same string, It's doable, it's fine, but it's a lot, lot easier using the rake. Now, obviously this works great for a single ghost note, but we can also expand on that to include two ghost notes by raking across three strings. So if we were to do this with the C there, third fret of the A string, again, get into home position, and what we can do is rake across the G and D strings. So, and then come down onto the C again, so. Okay, so this one takes a little bit more control, but again, you know, it's not that hard and it's a lot easier with this hand because we're just raking across. So you just have to get used to the rhythm, really. So if we were to build up speed on there, you can see how this really, really helps. So we get this kind of cascading effect. Okay, so that's what you want to be building up to, you know, really getting the speed up so that then when you have to, you know, put that into a bass line, it, it doesn't matter. You can just, you know, whip it out and you've got the muscle memory there, you know, for, uh, for raking across. So, and try the same thing on the G. And you can pretty much go as fast as you want. Okay. So let's try our bass line again, moving between the C and the G, but we'll start with two ghost notes and then move to the one, which sounds like this. Okay, so if we were to build up speed, So you can see there how when you start building up speed, those two notes, it's a lot, lot easier than playing with the two fingers where we would have, we can go a lot quicker. Okay. Finally, if you want to go even further with this, you can actually use all four strings to rake across to get three ghost notes in there. And obviously, if you've got a four string bass, you're only going to be able to do this on the E string. So if we take the G again, third fret of the E string, we can actually rake down G string, D string, A string, and then land on the G on the E string. So we have... Which one we build up speed? Okay, so we get this triplet effect of diddly dam, diddly dam. Okay, so. Okay, so that's a really, really cool little cascading effect there. So let's try a bass line again, moving between the C and the G, and this time we'll try adding in those three ghost notes on the G. Just be careful with the uh, with the rhythm in there, because remember when we come down on here, we've got a triplet, but then on the on the others, we've got 16th notes, but you'll hear how that sounds. So. Okay. Obviously, adding the ghost notes in this way has to be practiced until it becomes second nature, and the application is completely based on context. Sometimes it just doesn't feel right to play the ghost notes, you know, rigged. It feels better to actually play them on one string. But if you practice this technique, you know, and get used to playing it at higher tempos, 
you know, eventually that muscle memory will develop and then you'll just be able to apply them when you feel like it. So please like this video, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. And remember to get on over to Talking Bass where you'll find all of the lesson material, including the tab, along with all those hundreds of other lessons, uh, the lesson map. Then sign up to the free membership to gain access to all of those free goodies, including the scale reference manual. Okay, I'll see you next week.